Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so paint along with me. Grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paints, and paint along. Let's rid the world of unpainted models. Now, this week I'm done my Tactical Marines. They're all done. No more Dark Angel Tactical Marines for a little while. That's good. And today I'm working on, uh, I started doing my Terminators. And while doing that, I actually discovered that I actually have Deathwing Knights. Kind of forgot that they were there. And they were in really ugly condition. So I'm going to paint them today. That's what I'll be working on today. I'm slowly making them look nice again. And uh, just one color at a time. I'm going to build them up and get as much done today as I can. Ramble about my week. Talk about how I can injure myself in various ways. And uh, yeah, so let's get stuff done. Yes. Hey everyone. So today I'll be working on these knights. This guy has no arms because I don't know where his arms are. I'll call him Army. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to work on these guys. As I said, I'm cleaning them up. They were not in really nice condition for paint jobs, so I was pretty scratched up, and I'll be just painting them a color at a time today and getting them all into decent shape again. That's what it's about, you know? I'm, uh... yeah, it's going to be good. Well, that's what I'm going to do. And besides that, I'll talk about my week, as always. Um, I'm preparing for an upcoming tournament, which is on Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun, called Brawl in the Hall. And uh, these guys won't be there, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately, but I'm going to have a great time anyway. I'm not playing uh, Dark Angels. So, yeah. Oh, and I should probably start off, as always, you know, please go check out my Patreon page if you want to support my free content. And uh, The Warp. Either one is a great way to support my content and keep my videos coming. And uh, this week even, I think before this video even came out, you're going to see that I, I made a painting tutorial for, um, for free. It's Mephiston, so go check it out. It'll probably be up just before this one. Uh, the Patreon people, it was actually released two weeks ago, but the Patreon people got a two-week preview. And then uh, it was released free earlier today. So, good stuff there. So go check that out. It's been a good week, overall. Uh, I've gotten some videos done. Uh, the warp content has been pretty good this week for frequency, and the free content, too. Um, I've done, oh, and by the way, what color I'm working on right now, I'm doing white scar on the white areas of these models. There's not a lot of white left. It's just the shoulder pad symbols and the symbols on the shields. Uh, done. I'll start with him. Yeah. And so, yeah, even the free content. In the free content this week, I put out a video, basically, uh, on Monday... I was raking up the leaves, as I normally do on Mondays and Sundays, because there's so many leaves in my property, that I decided to make a video called How Orc Players Rake Their Leaves. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to ruin it in case you haven't seen it, so go check out the video. I think you might like it. Apparently some people don't, but whatever. Um, but it was good. It was fun to film. It hurts. That's all I'm going to say is it, it hurt. And it hurt filming it. So I was in a lot of pain, actually, the next day. Um, it was, yeah, it was quite painful. That's all I'm going to say. It was, it was quite painful. Yeah, quite painful. But it was fun. And I hope people liked it. And uh, it was a goofy video. So that's all I'm going to say. So that's how I start off my week. Uh, I got a miniature painting 101 out. I think it's for pelts for free. We're now well into the hundreds now in the in paid content. It's crazy in the in the warps. You should go check it out. As I said, there's like a, episode 110, I'm pretty sure. So it's cool. And uh, so that was good. Uh, the battle report this week, I think I might just delay it till next week. We'll see. If I have time to edit it, it's gonna be a, it's a long battle report, so I might just put it up next week. We'll see. In uh, in free content, it was a great battle report that I filmed a little while ago, with my homies Cody Rue and Mike Groves and his friend, Mike's friend. It was good. But it was a long game, as you'll see, because we were playing I think twenty five hundred points. Twenty five hundred points or two thousand, maybe two thousand each. Side, but it was like double, it was doubles, thousand points per per person. Right now it's pouring, 
pouring rain. It's been a wet fall so far. I don't think that they're actually calling for snow for a while, so that'll be nice. It'll just rain. I'll, I can take rain. I don't mind. I don't mind. I like rain way more than snow. So that'll be good. Yeah, I was injured, and then I I really injured. Um, I'm not gonna say I'm not ruining the leaf video, but I injured my hip and my arm while filming it. So I was in a lot of pain earlier in the week, and my back has been off. But it's been I've been fighting through the pain, just taking some painkillers and working hard. It's been a very productive week for painting uh, since my last video. Uh, I've gotten a lot done actually. It's, it's been good. So since the last video, I finished up the 25. Tactical Marines. So they're all done. So I'm, of course, working on the Elites now. And uh, so I finished up the Tactical Marines. And oh, I forgot there's, a, there's actually a symbol on their chest. That should be white. White, white. All right. So does he have it too? Yep, I should get him done first. So, uh, yeah, I got them done. Oh, no, this guy doesn't have it. Never mind. Uh, what else did I do? And then I realized for my... There's a tournament coming up called Brawl in the Hall. An event that I'm going to. And it uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm bringing Imperial Knights. I've been very public about that. I'm bringing Imperial Knights. I'm going to have fun. Hopefully you have fun playing against me. Cool stuff. Imperial Knights. So uh, I was looking at my list... And unfortunately, to make everything WYSIWYG, I didn't have 1,850 points. So I was maybe thinking about bringing a Vindicare Assassin. But then I looked at a Vindicare Assassin, and I just didn't have anything else to put in my list. So I decided, then it just all of a sudden hit me. Why don't I just bring a combined, this is not a combined arms detachment, a, uh, an ally detachment. Of, uh, oh, this guy doesn't have any white on him, because he has no arms. Okay, done. Done, no arms, McGee. So... Um, I decided to bring a combined, uh, sorry, an allied detachment, and I thought, okay, I can bring an allied detachment of Dark Angels or an allied detachment of Imperial Fists. And I thought, well, Imperial Fists are probably better as a as a as a an allied detachment because. Um, so right now, by the way, I'm going to take some Dragon of Nightshade and shade all these areas to make them a. Uh, blue tint to them. Um, so, because if, if they're filling the place of a Vindicare Assassin, you need something to pop vehicles on top. Of the, you know, there's... The biggest problem with knights is that most of the knight guns that I have are strength 7. They're good for killing infantry. Amazing for killing infantry. But, uh... When you're facing, like, a... A, a spam list of, you know, like... Anything with armor, you have problems. Land Raiders, you're gonna have problems. Uh, the Vindicator spam, you're going to have problems. Uh, Ghost Arcs, you're going to have problems because of their shielding, right? The quantum shielding. So, you need something to pop vehicles or at least be able to pen them to knock down their armor in that particular case, in the case of the uh, quantum shieldings. So, the I'm, I'm bringing a Devastator squad for my... Um, my, my allied detachment is a, li a level 2 librarian, a Devastator squad with, I think, three Lascans. And um, so that's good. So the librarian combined with Devastators can be so nasty. Um, and then scouts. So then I realized I don't have any scouts made. I, and it was too expensive of a list for, for, uh, for tactical marines. So I had to paint up... Uh, I painted up a squad of five Imperial Fist t uh, Scouts, which are now in my studio. So, over the last week, I have painted up a... You know, I finished 30... Or, sorry, 25 Tactical Marines. And I did five Scouts. And then this week's painting tutorial in the the Warp... Um, it's just got delayed a little bit, so it'll be up probably tomorrow. Is... Or, by the time it today, probably. Is this guy. Look at him. A Dark Angels Venerable Dreadnought with the last cannon. I think he turned out really cool. I love the base on him, so he's a really cool model. A lot of fun to paint up. Let's go check out that. You'll see it tomorrow. And uh, so uh, that adds another... So the, like the last week alone, 
That's almost like 600 points, I'm pretty sure, of Space Marines. You know, that's nice. So that's a lot of work done over the last week. So that's that's been a very productive week for painting. And then now I'm just, what I'm doing this week is, uh, I started off by just cleaning up and, and rebasing, um, or at least fixing up the basing of all my Terminators, because a lot of the bases have gone to crap lately. So, yeah, I'll show you, uh, like this guy. He's not done yet. You can see all the, the basing that's come off him. And so this week I've been just rebasing them, making them look pretty. And then while I was looking for them, I actually found pieces of these guys. I was like, oh my gosh, I still have knights. I totally forgot that I had them. So I'm just going, so then I was like, okay, I'm going to put the, um, the basing aside for now and work on these guys because I've really should bring them into my game. It will, you know, adds another level of my dark, my death wing and, uh, people want to see that. So that's good. And so then this week, my goal is to get these guys done and then finish the basing before next week's episode of painting the J. So the next week's episode, I'm probably, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm either going to start with Necrons. I've just, I've never done two things, either Necrons or commissions, uh, a commission that I've been waiting to do for a while. And I'm probably going to do the commission because it'll get me off the, get me, uh, you know, going on it. And it'll be cool to show you just some of my commission work. Uh, I'm thinking that for maybe a month. And then Necrons. Because I, I can get a Decurian detachment done within a relatively short period of time um, with the Necrons. So that would be good. And uh, yeah. And then I don't know what I'll do after that. Just keep going. You know, and as I said, it's it's crazy. I'm seeing, I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. My models are painted, and it's getting to the point now where, as I said, I'm painting a lot of models, uh, and there's not that many left. Like, I, I think I've painted more models in the last year that are mine than I have left in my studio, so I think I have less than a year's worth of studio models. That's pretty cool. Thanks for this painting with Jay. I'm hoping that you at home and in internet land are having just as much success as I have, because I, it's been a great time here so far. What color should you do next? Red. Let's do reds. So next, I'll take some fist on red and paint the red areas. I should probably double check about this relic, the Periphus relic, what is it called? Periphus relic of the Unforgiven, or whatever it's called. Gold handle, cool. Yeah, so that's about it. That's what's going on in my life, you know? So my list for Brawl, I don't care about I'm going to take a picture and send it to the Brawl people, I don't care. Like, I'm, I don't, I'm not playing to win. I don't, I'm going to have a great time. I'm bringing up a list that could be quasi-competitive, obviously, but uh, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not list tailoring or anything, right? I'm just playing it. I'm going to have a good time. Um, so my list for Brawl is going to be a three, is four knights. So it's a household detachment, or I'm, I'm still debating which detachment. Um, probably the household. That way I can keep objective secured. And a combined arms, sorry, a... Uh, Allied detachment. So my my standard deta my my main detachment is an Acheron, a Lancer, a Castigator, and an Errant, which is the guy with the Melta, the giant Melta gun. The reason why I brought the Melta gun was once again for vehicle popping. My other three guys are really good at infantry killing, really good at infantry killing, but not amazing at. Uh, vehicle popping. So I need some vehicle popping action and a Melta is, is really required because the other gun's only strength 7 or strength 8 maybe and that's just nothing against a Land Raider versus strength 9 AP1 Melta is pretty good against a Land Raider. So, yeah. And as I said, the fun part about my list is I don't know how I'm going to run it yet with the Librarian. I think it's going to depend on the scenario. Right now I'm just taking the Fist on Red and painting all the red areas. But um, I think the Librarian, actually, if, if my opponent doesn't click in, that the Librarian might actually be the key to my list. Um, because Librarians plus uh, Imperial Knights, you can cast powers on Imperial Knights because they are Battle Brothers, right? And I have a level 2 Psyker Librarian, right? So I have two powers. Now, the prop, depending on the scenario and who I'm up against, I'm going to choose different... Um, psychic powers. The two choices are 
telepathy or divination, in my opinion. Because one of them, you can give my favorite power, invisibility, because it's so broken. Um, invisibility is just nasty, right? So, so, so nasty. Um, and so you can cast invisibility on either the devastators, making them really hard to shoot. And if you get l stupidly lucky, you can get like a, maybe a combination like invisibility and shrouding. Then you're just in heaven because you can cast shrouding. And if you keep your knights close to you, your knights are walking around with cover saves. And you, you're, if your guys are in cover, you're, you're, um, if your, um, devastators are in cover, then they're in great shape because then they're walking around with like a two up cover safe and invisibility on them. So they're not going to be touched and they're the easiest things to kill, right? Plus the scout squad. Um, or the other options you cast invisibility on like your main, your one of your knights that you're worried that your opponent's going to go after. And if that's the case, then your opponent won't really have a chance to go after them because it's hard to target a knight with, with invisibility. It's... Even if it's a twin link gun, really, it's it's you're rolling you're rolling for sixes, and it, it's a really big game changer. The other option though is you can go divination, which makes knights insanely powerful as well, but more offensively powerful than defensive. I find telepathy is more defensive for the best powers, and then divination is more offensive because the um, the the primaris power for divination is. Uh, Prescience, which is twin-linked guns, essentially. Well, not twin-linked. It is not, it's intentionally not twin-linked. It is re-rolled to hit. So if you have a flamer template, for example, it's not twin-linked. You don't get to re-roll to wound. But you can cast that on the on the Devastators, giving your Devastators, who have Tank Hunter, by the way, because they're Devastators that belong to, uh, that belong to uh, Imperial Fist Faction, right? Because they're, they, so they have Tank Hunter. And... They can cast, then they're nasty, or you can give it to a knight who has, because remember the Forgeable Knights, one of them I'm bringing is twin linked already, but the Lancer isn't. The Lancer is a strength 7 AP2, uh, heavy 6 gun. So that would be really nasty on a knight, twin linked gun. And then there's also the one called, I think it's Forewarning. Uh, Forewarning ignores cover. So I could give Ignore's cover to the Devastators or to um, or to a knight, right? So then I have a strength, you know, I like I give the Melta guy, gun guy, who then has a gun like a strength nine AP one Melta Ignore's cover blast, large blast, I think, large blast, I think. Like that's that's hilarious, beyond beyond nasty. So depends on who I'm up against. You know, if I end up facing like a, maybe like a, a Dark Angels Ravenwing force, I'll probably just go for as much Ignore's cover as possible. Because, uh, yeah, then there's no jinking. And all my guns are AP3 or better. So I would just be removing chunks of squad at a time. Or if I gave it to a Castigator... Strength 7, AP3, Heavy Bolt Cannon, right? It's a bolt, heavy Bolt Cannon or Bolt Cannon? For everyone, it's 36 inch range. Um, but it's Strength 7, AP3. So then I could kill, statistically I'd kill like, I don't know, 6 a turn. No saves allowed. 6, um, six Ravenwing, just dead. And then the Acheron just flames them. The Acheron is my favorite one. He's really expensive, but he's fun. Um, because he has the uh, he the Hellstorm Strength 7-83 gun. So, he is going to be nasty. So, depends who I'm up against and stuff. But I think it's going to be some fun. There's some potential for some insanity to ensue. I like the way these guys are looking. I really do. They are looking so much better than they did a couple hours ago. When I found them, I was like, ah, what the heck was I doing when I painted them? They were all chipped and uh, pretty gross. So Now I'm much more content with the way they're looking.
I can't wait to get these guys on the tabletop as well, and some battle reports. I know Deathwing aren't the most competitive, but uh, who cares? You know me, I don't play to win. I play for fun, and I play to entertain. And I rake leaves like no other. Yeah. <laughs> What else happened this week? I finally saw the movie. I'd never seen it before. I finally saw the movie Pixels. I actually liked it. It was not bad at all. Um, being an Adam Sandler movie, I thought I thought it was going to be worse. But it was actually pretty fun. It was pretty silly in a lot of things, but I thought it was really cool. Just the video game aspect of it was really cool to see. Plus, I'm, I'm a bit older, right? So the I remember those games. And it was really cool seeing them come alive. The graphics were fun. It was pretty entertaining. It was a fun story. And I always like to watch Adam Sandler movies and play the game, like, spot the cameos of Adam Sandler's friends. Because you know they're always in them. This one didn't have Augur when, like, Chris Rock wasn't in it. Uh, Kevin James was obviously a main character. He plays the President of the United States. You can always know the the intro, like you always know with an Adam Sandler movie who he's gonna end up hooking up with in the end, within like ten minutes of the film. So, it's good. Good movie. Yeah, these nights are gonna be cool. I hope I find the guy's body, so the guy's arms, so eventually he has arms as well. That would be nice. What if I don't? Oops. Cool. Look at him. Looking pretty good. This is much better than when I found him, which is good. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm just really excited for the event. I'm really, I've been looking forward to it for a long time. You know, and I get to play knights. And it's, it's a not to win. I just want to play knights so badly because they're one of those armies that you just don't get a chance to play very often. So, it's cool. And I really like the way Dave, Dave intentionally... He does things, like, he, it's random, sorry, it wasn't, it's almost random assignments of people. But what he does is he intentionally rigs it, so it's, it, not rigs, uh, he, it's, I gotta watch my wording here. He, he fixes it, so it is random, but it's also, uh, it's random within groups. So, you're either from Peterborough, you're in the local meta, or you're in a, in a different meta. And what he does is, he always puts, first round, um... A local meta guy against, or girl, uh, a local meta person versus a non-local meta person. So you obvious, so first round, you're guaranteed to play someone that you don't normally get to play against. And I think that's really cool. The only downside to that is you do run the risk of um, having a situation where different metas, different rules. And that happened to me last uh, brawl, that the other metas apparently play slightly different with a couple rules, and... Uh, than ours, but uh, it happens, right? You just t discuss the rules. Uh, worst come worst, you call the judge over. And the thing is, in this particular circumstance, is obviously the judge would typically agree with me because if it's different metas, different rules, the judge is from my meta. So he would play it the same style I would, right? But uh, it happens, right? It happens. That's the thing with the, our game. Obviously, some rules are open for interpretation, and so, yeah. I'm kind of hoping tomorrow. I don't care if I face it. If I face it, it would be awesome. I want to see that new Tau. Uh, you now, there is one of the rules of the tournament is that uh, you can't bring... Sorry, you, you, the models... Not the models. The rules have to be at least 30 days old by the, the date of the tournament. And the thing is, the Tau Codex came out two and a half weeks... Or two weeks before the tournament. So there's no... 
new Tau Codex at the tournament. But that being said, uh, most of the models had the rules released in White Dwarfs. Uh, so the, the rules for the, the um, are out. So you can see like a ghost kill, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. And you can see that new gigantic guy, and that's the one I really want to see. Oh, I missed some things on him. Oops. Um, I'm really hoping to see that new gigantic monstrous creature, uh, whatever it's called. The giant one, the forge world one. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, Jay, well, yeah, who's going to buy that? I know a guy, there's a guy in our meta who has one. So I'm hoping he brings it. I don't care if I face it or not, but if I face it, that'd be awesome. It'd be fun to see what it does in action, right? Again, I could get my butt handed to me, but that's not why I play. I want to see this thing, what it does. So that'd be really cool. Apparently it's giant. So... Can't wait to see it. Hopefully I get to see it on Sunday. Or Saturday, sorry. What else has been interesting in the news? Uh, Russian, the Russian people are apparently amazing at doping scandals. They were like cheating galore. That's pretty wacky. And like everyone was involved, like all the, like the, everyone in their Olympic committee was involved in the doping and, and I don't know. To me, I, I, I know people like to use that expression. If you're not cheating, you're not trying or you're not, if you're not cheating, yeah, you're not trying. I hate that expression. I don't like that expression. I don't think, I don't know. I, I just, I don't like cheating. I'm not a big cheater. You know, I would never, like, maybe it's, I don't know, because I play for entertainment. I'm not an uber competitive person. Um, but I'm not a win at all cost player, as you can probably tell by the way I play my armies. And I would never cheat in my battle reports. I would never cheat. Um, I would never, ever want to lose my credibility. You know, over one game, it would make no sense. Because think about it, if I got caught cheating, or my opponents thought I was cheating, who no one would want to play me in battle reports, right? And that's not cool, because I want to play battle reports. And, and as you can see in many of my battle reports, I lose. In some games, I lose very uh, one-sidedly. But that's okay. You know, as I said, I play the game for fun. And if I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. I try to win, obviously. I don't throw the games or anything. But uh, I don't play win at all cost, you know, armies. The closest thing I have is probably when I'm playing at the uh, the tournament coming up. Do you see any purity seals? I don't think so. I don't think I didn't see many purity seals on this guy. No, nope, that's gonna be gold, gold, gold. Cool. Look at this. They're really coming along. At this rate, they mm, we're 27 minutes in. I don't think I'll be finishing them up in this video, but I'll be getting pretty close. Good job, Jay. Good job indeed. So now I'm going to take some uh, Caraber Crimson and shade the red areas. Sarah from Sepia, Caraber Crimson. Cool. Yeah, and that's, it just annoys me when a country cheats as a whole. Like, their credibility is going to be forever ruined. Again. And it's like the second time in history they've been caught really cheating. You know, like the Olympics where all the women had beards kind of thing. It saddens me. There's no hope with dope. You know? Oh, and it's very unfortunate. I was talking last week about how the, um, I don't remember if you saw it, I don't, it was before or after, but there was that Star Wars fan who was dying of cancer in the States. And uh, all he wanted to do was see Star Wars. And it was really awesome that J.J. Abrams helped make it happen. And all, a lot of the actors behind the film, like Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, they got behind it. 
Um, and he saw the movie. That's that's awesome. Like he saw an un, he saw a an, an edit, like an almost finished edited copy of the movie. Obviously, it's not out yet. And unfortunately, I don't know if you heard about this. He passed away last night. And uh, that makes me a little sad because obviously I want to hear about people passing away. You know, he wasn't very he's was younger than me, and um, but um, it it really. Um, it makes me happy that he was able to see the movie before he passed away. And, and the same thing happened last time that J.J. Abrams did this. Uh, it was a couple years ago with the new Star Trek film that J.J. Um, Abrams helped a Star Trek fan see the movie. And then the Star Trek fan actually passed away within like 48 hours. I remember he died very shortly afterwards. And, uh, yeah. You know, it just, it really is awesome that these people make a lot of money. They really do. But when someone who makes a lot of money has the opportunity to really influence someone's life and they take that opportunity, that to me is awesome. You know, that's always awesome. Especially with, it comes to like dying wishes, you know. And the thing is, they're they're really busy people. Like J.J. Abrams is probably like going crazy editing that movie, right? He's he's going crazy editing Star Star Wars because it's coming out soon. So you could you know like he he's a really busy guy. You couldn't blame him if he, if he said, "I'm sorry, I'm really busy. And the video's not done." And, you know, but he didn't do that at all. He was like, "Yeah, man, I'm gonna help you see it." And then he called up the guy to let him know that he was watching it. Um, that just, that really is awesome to me. It, it just, yeah, that, it's hard to describe how, how that makes me smile. Really hearing about these deeds, because they don't have to do it, right? They don't have to, but they want to. They, they want to, because they know how much these things mean to their fans. They, 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 they are even more, I don't know, I'm very appreciative of my, of my fans. I really am. And, uh, I just, it really, it really shows the caliber of people that they are when they have the chance to do something selfless, you know, there was, other than, it, obviously it's great publicity for Star Wars, but. I don't think that they're thinking about that at all. Obviously, it, it could be, but, you know. And I just smeared red on this. But, um... I wash my... Start again. But, um... They could use this publicity, I guess, but it, it's not what they did. They didn't do it that way. I'm pretty sure it was, it was selfless. You know? It was selfless. If anything, it could impact negatively, because... I know that they're not going to speak about it or anything. They probably signed um, uh, no talking clauses and stuff, or contracts or whatever they're called. But yeah, that to me, that was my favorite thing that I, I, my favorite thing in the news was that they were able to do it for him. And then it was very unfortunate that he passed away uh, very shortly afterwards. And I've heard of that cancer before. It's very nasty. It's called a uh, pindle cell sarcoma. And basically that guy's entire lungs were, t were just tumors. But let's, let's change the topic and make it a little more positive. Um, but that's just, as I said, that's, that, that makes me smile when I see those things in the news. Um, the pandas are doing well at the Toronto Zoo. That makes me happy. They're both alive and doing well and, that's that's great news. I'm really excited. I want to go see the baby pandas. I'm definitely going to go see them when they're when they are put out. I want to go see a baby panda. I'm going to. I don't care about waiting in line. I'm going to go see a baby panda. They're adorable, and uh, that'll be cool. It's still pouring rain here, as you can probably hear. The rain is just coming down really heavily. Whenever it rains, I I know this is really cheesy, but every time it rains in November. I can't get the song November Rain by Guns N' Roses out of my head. It's one of my favorite rock songs of all time. 
And today I texted um, one of my fellow employees and I said, don't you dare go try to hold a candle because it's, it's hard to hold a candle in the cold November rain. And uh, she didn't understand what I was saying. I thought she would because I thought she, she knew classic rock. But, um, and yes, I'm calling it classic rock. I know it's 1991, but uh, still, I think it's classic rock now. It's you know, 25 years ago. Um, and it was funny. She had no idea what I was talking about. But it is. It's hard to hold a candle in the cold November rain. Sometimes I need some time on my own. Sometimes I need some time all alone. What do I do now? Uh, the red is still drying. So I will go to silvers. Yeah, let's do silver. So it's time to take some, uh, where are we at? 35 minutes. And I'm going to take some lead belcher. Lead belcher. Let's do the metallic areas. There's another song that I get into my head whenever I hear rain. It's an old song by a woman named Happy Rhodes called When the Rain Came Down. And one of the cool things about this song, I know it's kind of cheesy, but it's a, it's really cool about Happy Rhodes. And anybody who knows who Happy Rhodes is will know about this. Is Happy Rhodes is one of those singers. She's an old singer, but she has such a, a crazy vocal range. Her normal singing voice is is pretty low, like Annie Lennox. She's kind of like Annie Lennox when she sings, normally. But she has the ability to sing really high. Like, uh, easiest way to describe it would be like Kate Bush. Anybody remembers Kate Bush? She did several duets with Peter Gabriel and stuff. But uh, that kind of high. And she has that vocal range. And she sings both of those. Two. She sings in the song, When the Rain Came Down, both. So it sounds like a woman doing a duet with someone. But it's actually one singer who just alternates between her, her higher notes and her lower notes um, while singing. And it's, it's a good song. It's kind of, you know, kind of, she has kind of a, I don't know, Sophie B. Hawkins kind of sound to her. I'm starting to date myself on that. I'm old. Yeah. Let's see, what else do I talk about? You know what TV show I'm really loving? The Muppets. I love the new Muppets show. I know some people don't, but I do. I really like the new Muppets show. I really do. I think it's 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 very smart, very smart humor, and it's an adult move show. It doesn't have swearing or anything, but it's a very adult. You know, like it's not for kids, and um, I really like it. And what my favorite things about the new Muppet Show is because it's it's basically like a behind the scenes show. Like um, it's closer to the Office, right? Because it's one of those like mockument the documentary type style, move right, and. What I really love about it is, as I said, the way that they've done it, being a, um, the documentary style, is you get to actually see some really cool character development um, with the characters, right? Like, the Muppets. And it's really cool because I've been watching the Muppets all my life, and you don't, you get to see the, char the characters in movies and stuff, but there's not a lot of character development. Right? Like Kermit and Miss Piggy, they break up, they get back together, whatever. But um, there really isn't that much character development in the in the movies, right? But now with this TV show, you get to see the characters show vulnerability, they they fight, they you know, they, they interact, and it's just really cool to see them almost as like I compare it to almost seeing actors outside of a movie. It's almost like that than seeing Muppets. And you forget that they're Muppets. 
And the, as I said, the writing is just brilliant. Um, there was an episode a little while ago where they went to a karaoke bar. And it's my favorite, one of my favorite scenes of any Muppet thing ever uh, was the, the Swedish chef doing the rapper's delight. You see the heap? Hoop. It was just awesome. Go see that. There's, it's probably on YouTube. It has, everything's on YouTube. So, rapper's delight. Swedish chef. It was awesome. It just made my frickin' day. I loved it. I was rolling on the floor laughing. Out loud. Yeah. He, he's just awesome. Um, and as I said, the writing is really good. So I'm glad that show's out. I've been watching most of the new shows. I caught a couple episodes of The Grinder. It was okay. Uh, what else did I watch in the new shows? I watched it in the season of Survivor, obviously, but uh, it's not a new show by any means. Um... else uh the grinder i've seen a couple episodes of that's about it i don't watch many of the new shows um yeah i really can't think of any that i watch besides the muppets the muppets to me as i said has just been awesome i really like it um, oh, I caught a couple episodes of Grandfathered. Eh. It's okay. And I, I, don't, I don't know. I know some people are really into Heroes Reborn. I just didn't watch Heroes. I was never into Heroes. So Heroes Reborn to me just wasn't that appealing. Supergirl, I've heard some good things about. I don't, again, I don't watch it. But, uh, That's my first question to you all, uh, is are you watching any of the new shows? And what new shows, new to this season, are you watching? Which ones do you like? What do you think about Supergirl? Or New Heroes? Or The Muppets? Nudge, nudge. Um, now, I don't want to be spoiler alert, but whatever, I'm going to talk about this. So I witnessed a couple interesting things this week. Uh, I witnessed two people in a very heated argument. Like, it started off, I think, civil, but got heated really quickly um, about The Walking Dead. And in The Walking Dead, I'm not mentioning who, I don't want to be spoilery, but uh, here's a hint. There's a character right now whose fate is up in the air. Right? It's a guy. I'm not saying who. But um, all likelihood, the character's dead, but might be alive because... The way that they killed off the character doesn't make much sense. And I, I witnessed two people like yelling at each other about why the character is alive. One of them was arguing. And why the other, why some of the other guy was arguing why the character is dead. And I just thought, wow, these people are really, really passionate about The Walking Dead. And I, haven't been, I really haven't been that passionate about The Walking Dead in a couple of years. I'm watching the show. And I read most, I read, you know, the first like 70 books, 70 comic, uh, you know, set issues of the comic book, but, uh, I've never been, like, fighting and screaming at, um, someone over the fate of a character, so that was kind of interesting. What else? Uh, Remembrance Day was yesterday? By the way, shout out, if you're watching this, no, I know he doesn't watch a lot of my Painting with Jays. But uh, Hugh, and also anybody, I, I think it's, I don't know, most of my viewers, I don't know if you're in the military or in any of the forces in any country, but obviously a big thank you to anybody who out there who watches my content and uh, who's in the military. Uh, who else was it? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't think of many, but Hugh, and only Hugh can prevent Flores Friars. Um, Hugh, who I got to know to a really good amount when they came to visit me with uh, Cody Rue and, and Mike Groves in, I think it was February, or April? I think it was April. Um, Hugh is in the military, so shout out to him and to everyone else who's in the military, because obviously Remembrance Day was yesterday, and 
I have nothing but respect for uh, people who are in the armed forces because I couldn't do it. I just couldn't. I could not take someone else's life in the military. I'm not strong enough to do that. I don't want to really do that. And um, I don't know. They, it's a courageous, it's a courageous uh, field to go into. You know, I, so I thank everyone out there who is a part of the armed forces and, you know, or, yeah, you know, I really do. Um, I personally think that, uh, there should be like an, uh, another day as well for dangerous jobs, like cops and firefighters and, and all them who have to deal with, with dangerous jobs as well. I think, cause that'd be good to respect them as well. But Remembrance Day, um, my grandfather did fight. He fought in World War II. Um, he was a, uh, he really, he was an instructor overseas. He was in the Air Force and he was an instructor, but he was overseas for years. Like he was even, he stayed overseas. His tour, um, lasted two years. I'm pretty sure after the war. And, uh, so then he came home and he f met my grandmother, found, fell in love and they got married. He was, ten, he was 11 or 12 years older than her. And so he didn't start having kids till he was like 40 because he was overseas. Like he was, I think, 38 when they got married. Uh, and he was 37 when he got back from the war. So he did fight in the war. So Jay's relatives, you know, had fought in wars and stuff. And, uh, World War II. And, uh, yeah. So my grandfather told me stories. My other grandfather uh, was in the military. He was in the military, uh, the army, the Canadian army, uh, during World War II. But he was too young to, he's only 88 now. So he was just, he was 16 during the war when I think he signed up for it and they couldn't send him overseas. He was like a, a year too young to be, to be sent overseas. So he's just in the army and he kept peacekeeping here. But he never actually saw battle. But, uh, yeah, and it just, again, it makes you think the amount of change that has happened since during our, gra like our grandparents' lives, you know, it really is blow mind-blowing. My grandfather, unfortunately, passed away years ago, because obviously, he's not alive today, because do the dates, like, he'd be in his hundreds. Most people don't live that long, unfortunately. Um, but he passed away in uh, 1993. No, sorry, 1998. Yeah, 1998. He died in, in Father's Day, 1998. And, uh, yeah, but uh, I've always been, you know, I, I've always respected um, Remembrance Day. Because we all know that there's certain holidays a year that are just kind of made up for to sell stuff. But Remembrance Day is not one of them. So I've always had respect... I don't know if it's called Remembrance Day all over the world, but in Canada it's Remembrance Day. I think it's called Veterans Day in the States. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, people who live in the States. But, uh, and right now I'm just going to take some non-oil and, uh, and shade these uh, metallic areas that we just did. But um, I've always had so much respect for people who, do, who fight in the armed forces and for, um, for Remembrance Day. I hope you do all too. You know, I play war games, but they play wars in real life. So, and speaking of the military, my brother-in-law is actually in the military. He's in the army. And he was, in, he was one of my groomsmen at my wedding. And here's a fun story for you. Some J, tri, some J knowledge for you. In case anybody ever questions you on J knowledge. Um, so at my wedding, we, ha we, he knew ahead, he found out ahead of time that my aunt and uncle, my aunt and uncle like to bring fireworks wherever they go. Well, not my aunt and uncle, technically my aunt and uncle-in-laws, my, my wife's aunt and uncle. They liked to, they, he knew that, he found out ahead of time that they were bringing fireworks to my wedding. Now, we had a wedding outside in the, in the summer, and it was um, in the countryside, so it was okay to let out fireworks. And he decided to bring home military explosives. Right? So he brought home some smoke grenades. 
some uh, some smoke grenades. And uh, they let them off. It was really cool because they're purple. So our photographer kind of deemed our wedding as the purple haze wedding because there's giant smoke grenades. That was kind of cool. So, yeah. And plus, in Canada, see, in Canada, the way that the holidays line up, it goes, because we have a slightly different order than, you know, the United States. Uh, we have Thanksgiving in, in October before Halloween. So it goes, thanks, like, if you look at the commercials in Canada, it goes Thanksgiving, heavy, heavy, heavy commercials. And then uh, Halloween, heavy, 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 heavy commercials. And then the day after, heavy, day after Halloween is typically Remembrance Day. And then the day after Remembrance Day, Christmas. So November 12th in Canada is when Christmas begins, really, the Christmas season. So, like, the day after Halloween, after Remembrance Day, festive special, you know, it's all about festive specials at Swiss Chalet, and your, I mean, you start your Christmas music at places. Now, some places have been playing Christmas music before Re Remembrance Day, but typically most places are encouraged to do the day after Remembrance Day and dedicate the time before Remembrance Day to Remembrance Day because, again, it's, it's a holiday that demands respect. You know, it does. Um, so, yeah, so now it's Christmas season. So everything's Christmas now. I didn't shade that. Oh, whatever. Time to shade the peripheral relic of the unforgiven. That's what I was pronounce it. Peripheral relic of the unforgiven. So as I said, it's been a good week. Got a lot of painting done for points. And in probably a week or so, I'll have a lot of my dark, pretty much almost my entire Dark Angels army that potentially could be painted, will be painted. And that's good. That's really good. Because, uh... And they're done. And then I'll have, like... I think I did the math. Oh, no, I, did, I did the math, sorry. I think I have about just over 4,000 points. I think it's 4,500 points. I guess I should start the golds. I can't believe I'm already starting the gold, but uh, there's not much other colors left. These guys are almost done. Like they're like this is almost battle report worthy. You know, if you saw this in a battle report, I think that's pretty you know battle report worthy. But um, let's finish them up. Let's keep going. All right, so I'll start golds uh, and then shade the uh, sort of then highlight up the the uh, silvers. So for the golds, I ran out of my favorite gold, so I'm going to use uh, red gold, which is a nice. It's closer to old gold than it is to... I like to use the liquid gold range from Vallejo. And I like red gold. It's closer to old gold than it is to, like, um, what's rich gold, the other one I use. It's a very, very warm gold, because it's so red, obviously. So we'll use that today for the golds. And as I said, what never ama what always amazes me is that within such a short period of time. Oh, so I'm, I'm going to cut the. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of isopropanol, some 99 percent isopropanol. Um, what always amazes me is how much work can get done in an hour. You know, after this hour, I'm almost going to be done. These guys, they're not completely done, but man, are they close? Like they're getting so close to being done. I could take these to a battle report today, and I think people would be okay with that. But let's uh, let's get more details done on them. And then we'll uh, keep going. You know, it's, it's all good. So yeah, Christmas season has begun. It's a little messy. Oops. But, uh, yeah. What else? Oh, yeah. And I'm sorry. The bow report came out recently. It was last week's bow report. And I should have said that ahead of time or in the post comment section. But it was filmed before I found out about the, about the twin linking. Because, as I said, and this is what a lot of people had a problem with my codex review, was that in the interactive codex, it doesn't say anything about the twin link guns that turn to come in for Dark Angels. For Deathwing. It's in the section in the interact in the hard copy and in the ebook, but not in my version. 
So I didn't know the rule until recently. And that just explains why I didn't play to that rule. Um, what else happened this week? Oh yeah, so in Face Off. Uh, Face Off has begun again in the Warp. And eventually there'll be another season of Face Off tournament and stuff. But uh, right now we're introducing some new characters into Face Off. Like recently, um, Mephiston, Sam Ale, uh, Azrael, and Castell and Crow have all been added to my Face Off roster. And so I played with Castell and Crow this week. He was in a he's in a Face Off episode with against Mephiston. And I didn't realize how good, like, I kind of forgot about him after my review, because uh, Castell and Crow was one of those characters with a great backstory, cool backstory, but was terrible in his previous codex. The only reason why you take him is to get Purifiers as troops, right? Like, he was so silly, because his rules, he has this really cool sword he can't use. The sword gives benefits to your opponent, so, like, if somebody assaulted him, they got, uh, Furious Charge. If you are in combat with him, you get Furious Charge. Like, it helped the opponent more than it helped him. Uh, it was silly. Like, I, I only used Castell and Crow, and he didn't have an independent character, so he couldn't attach himself to a squad. So, he, and he was expensive. So I was like, okay, so most of my, my, like, when I was doing battle reports with Mini Wargaming, there were a couple times I took Purifiers, so I took Castell and Crow, because he was the Purifier tax. He made Purifier's troops. And that was it. You know, I really didn't think of him that much. And I kept him hidden in, like, a building. Because I didn't want to give my opponent Slay the Warlord. He, was, he only has two wounds. And he's only toughness four. So he really is vulnerable. The only thing cool about him in the previous edition was he had that rule that when he died, you rolled, like, a leadership test or a psychic test. Your opponent could deny it, but then he could suck your opponent down with him. And, like, so you threw him at, like, a, a Bloodthirster or a Demon Prince. And then he would get killed by the Demon Prince and then take the Demon Prince down with him. It was really funny to do. But besides that, he wasn't really good for much. And then I kind of forgot about him when seventh, the 7th Edition Codex came out. But now he's actually quite, he's cool. Especially in a scenario like Face Off. I think he might do pretty well in Face Off. Because he has, because he's uh, he's in that group of people that has two different stances. He has like the combat stances, but he can use both of them at the same time. One of them gives him, sh um, one of them gives him uh, smash, making his weapon AP two. So he's an AP two force weapon essentially. And then he also has the ability to re-roll his um, his saving throws. So in a challenge scenario like face off or even in, in the game he's pretty nasty you know he can give himself hammer hand so he can have a, a strength six ap2 force weapon and if you don't go through his armor he has a two up rerollable armor save and if you go through his armor he has a four up rerollable iron halo so that's pretty cool He's a cool guy. So I'm going to use him more. I think I'm going to try to use him in Bower. The thing is, he, even, no, even now that I know he's cooler, I don't really see him fitting amazingly into my battle reports only because he, I know what he, like, I don't know. I could probably put him in. He just doesn't fit into most of my lists because I run Paladin heavy lists. Like Drago fits into my lists. But um, I should try out for sure. See how he does. Because I'm, you know, I'm always trying to try it with new guys in my battle reports. So having another guy to try out would be kind of cool. See how he does. and No harm, no foul, right? So look at this. After this, I just need to highlight up the reds, highlight up the silvers, and then uh, these pretty much, these guys are done. Look at that. Look, they're... I've done a lot of work in this one hour. One hour, people. That's all it takes is one hour to uh, sit down and dedicate yourself to painting. And now these guys weren't like I didn't just start them. Just I started them today technically because they were you know they had a couple parts painted. But uh, after today's episode, like I probably only need another twenty minutes and then basing them, and then they're done. 
And then I have a squad of Deathwing Knights to use in battle reports. So you definitely expect these guys soon in, in a battle report. Next time I run Deathwing, I'll run some Deathwing Knights. That's cool. Hmm. It's a good year. I, 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 I don't have the time, unfortunately, but I was really thinking it would be cool to sit down and calculate how many models I, I painted. I could probably look and figure out how many based on the videos, but uh, a lot. And how many points? 40k did I paint this year? Once again, a lot. And that's what I want. It's been a great, this is an awesome series, and that's why I'm going to keep filming it, because I know you people out there in, in internet land are getting just as much done as I am, you know? Through the comment section, I've been hearing about that, and how much work you just sit down, dedicate yourself for an hour, and then you go, whoa, look what I just did. Because look, at we're about an hour now. We just hit an hour. So probably an hour and like two minutes, including the intro, right? So I'll finish up the golds, and then we'll, uh, we'll call it a day. Because uh, we're at an hour already, you know, so it's been a good hour. But look at that, another 20 minutes, and I have a fully painted squad of uh, Deathwing Knights. And I think that's a successful day of painting. So in the last week, you know, I've done, I finished 30. I didn't do them all in the last week, obviously, but I finished 30, or sorry, 25 tactical marines. I was going to say 30 marines, but. 25 tactical marines, 5 scouts, um, a dreadnought, right, a venerable dreadnought, and um, a squad of Deathwing knights, and I've touched up uh, all but 5 of my, um, all but 5 remaining of my Deathwing, so I just need to finish up the basing. And then after that, there's only 2 Deathwing that need to actually be painted. So I'm probably going to make one of them into a, uh, a an aspect of them into a miniature painting one one, I think. But um, that'd be cool. I think this guy would be fun to use. I'll make sure he dies first every time. Hopefully, I can eventually find his. Uh, oops. Hopefully, I can eventually find his uh, arms. Good. Oh, it has a symbol there as well. And of course, next week I'll talk about my experience at uh, Brawl in the Hall. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I said, I'm excited. Win or lose, I'm going to have a good time. That's my goal is just have a good time. Meet people, talk to people, you know. I wonder if the Power Ranger kids will be there. Um... You know, just have a good time. Win or lose, play well, play fair, and have a good time. And if that's the case, I'm going to have a good time. And then I'll talk about it. And if I win, awesome sauce. It's icing on the cake. Because then I get a prize. And prizes are cool. I don't mind getting a prize. You know? I'm never going to turn down a prize. This uh, red gold is looking really nice. I like it. Yeah. Can't believe how ugly I painted these guys originally. But they're 
I'd say they're battle report worthy almost right now. As I said, this is almost the last, this is my final color that I'm starting after this is just, you know, uh, highlight the reds and silvers and then call it and say that's that's the name of the game. That's a good amount of, of detail for battle report worthy. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, I know that the, the, um, the, The Trail of Kelth box is coming out. I really wanted it, but then I found it. I just can't afford it right now. It came out at a bad time. Because to me, like, the registration for Adepticons next week. And uh, it's Christmas time. I just don't have the money. So I'll eventually get it, I think. I'll definitely try to get it in the future. The Trail of Kelth box set. Because I like to start playing 30k as well. But uh, I just can't have the money right now. I can't set aside the money for it. So, but that's okay. You know, I, I can't buy everything. I don't have unlimited funds. And that's that's realistic, right? You know, it's, it's normal. So I'll get it eventually. But it looks cool. I think it comes with a great amount of miniatures. In Canada, I think it's like 180 bucks. So it's not terrible for that amount of models. It's good. The only downside is that all the other models are basically Forge World. So it's expensive. It's very expensive to... Uh, to get all those models, right? Because if, if all the models that you have to buy are Forge World, it just gets really expensive really quickly. Everything's resin. Everything is, you know. <laughs> Good. I am very happy with these guys. Whatever. This is a long episode of Pain with Jay. Uh. Stu's also bringing in Pure Lights. I think he's doing, uh, I don't, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Stu had to change his list. Um, Stu, if you're out there, let the people know what you're bringing. I think he's bringing, uh, I think officially he's playing Imperial Guard with Imperial Knight allies versus me where I'm playing Imperial Knights with Imperial Fist allies, right? So my primary detachment is Imperial Fist, or not Imperial Fist, Imperial Knights. So I'll have four knights versus, I think Stu's going to play with two knights. But he's bringing the Shadow Sword, or Storm Sword. Shadow, Shadow Sword, Storm Sword, Storm Shadow. I think it's Shadow Sword. The one with the Strength D, Large Blast, or not, Strength D. Like Strength 10 AP1 ignores cover, Large Blast, or something like that. Something like that. So, I can't wait. I'm, I'm hoping we face, if we faced each other in like the finals... I think that'd be really cool. And I said, win or lose. I'd, lo I'd lose any day of the week to Stu. Because he's such a good guy. And uh, he's a, we play a lot. Like and neither, one of us is a, neither one of us are play at all, win at all costs players. And I, I enjoy, I really and thoroughly enjoy every time I play against Stu. Which I can pretty much say that against for any of my Battle Report opponents, I think. You know? Um, Dave's a good guy. Doug's a good guy. Trevor's a good guy. They seem to be bring it. I seem to get a lot of really nice opponents. I, I'm spoiled in that sense. I really haven't had many problems since I've went off my own to make videos. I really haven't had that many opponents that I've had. I'm like, oh, I don't want to play this person, you know. So, but uh, tr yeah, I really enjoy playing games against Stu. And so if I face him and if I win, awesome. If I lose. Awesome. We're going to have a good time. We're going to laugh. We're going to blow stuff up. And uh, that's what we're going to do, you know. We both know, we, we, with both such small lists, I think I, I only have 15 models. He has 25, I think, because now he's bringing Imperial Guard with Knights. So I think the reason why he had to bring Imperial Guard was that the rules state that you can only bring a Lord of War tank 
Shadow Sword with Imperial Guard. So he had to intentionally take Imperial Guard as a detachment. And then if that was the case, he had to knock down um, the number of knights, making a, 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 an ally. So that's it. Let's stop here, because I'm just finished up the metallic golds. Actually, ooh, I missed a spot. Let's keep going. See, I like this. We're having so much fun. I don't want to end, people. I missed one night, one spot. And then we'll uh, we'll call it a night. Of course, by the time it's coming out, it'll be Friday but uh, for you. But uh, it'll be okay, because on Thursday, the painting tutorial went up. And, uh, yeah. Look at this. I got knights. I can't believe it. I'm going to get this guy done. A squad of five guys only. I know, but still. One hour, and I get to ramble, and, and I get knights in the end. And so it's just, oh. More J knights. Cool. That's it. Yeah. They're almost done. Like, look at them. They, these guys... If I put this in a battle report, I don't think anybody would have a problem with them. They are basically done. You know, they don't have any highlight colors on the silvers or reds. But besides that, they like these are way past five color minimum. They're almost base. I gotta clean up the basing again. But that's it. So in this entire span of the night, I have um I've almost entirely finished them. And I'm gonna do I gotta finish the periphery relic of Unforgiven, whatever it's called. But uh that's it. I I think. The progress of the night has been good. 100, uh, hour and 11 minutes. Spoiled today. Mm -hmm. That's end now. So that concludes another episode of Painting with Jay. I really hope you got a lot done. Of course, it's been a long video. So hopefully you got some stuff done too. And you are just as proud of your progress today as I am. So after today, I got some old, I'm pretty much done. I'll be I'll probably finish them up tomorrow. Just do a quick, uh, you know, spend 20 minutes on them, finish up the basing. And then I got a squad of Imperial, uh, sorry, um, Dark Dark Angel, uh, Deathwing Knights to add to my army. That's awesome. So I'm almost about four and a half thousand points of, of Dark Angels now, which is pretty good. Seeing as before this, like the last month of painting, I've only had probably about 3,000. So I probably painted about 1,500 points, increased it by 50%. Not bad. So yeah, so thank you as always for paying along with me. My big question to you was, what TV shows are you watching? Which ones do you like? Also, as I said, a um, thank you to all you people out there fighting the armed forces. I really much respect that. Happy Remembrance Day, or whatever version, uh, whatever name you call it, like Veterans Day, I think it's called in the States. But yeah, so thank you very much. I highly respect you, obviously. I respect that. You know? And thank you very much for paying along with me. I really hope you got stuff done. And until next week, this is Jay saying happy painting with me.